this video is going to be a little bit different because first of all I'm in my car which is a change and two it's going to be about the SAFC2 the Apex C SAFC2 which is a super airflow converter and as you can see I am inside my car so I'm going to turn the camera on now like so yay inside the car alright first of all that's the SAFC2 this thing right here it's nice and blue so, uh, I usually just have it sort of stuck up here with double sided tape, you know. Um, this is, I'm going to point out real quickly, the reason why I don't talk to you about how to wire up a GA16D into a B12, and that's because of this. Hold on, just one moment. That's my wiring harness. As you can see, it is completely dishevelled and on various stages of disarray. So, I'm not going to tell anyone how to wire something up when I'll have that going on on the floorboard. Well, first thing to do to get your SAFC2 working is, you see how I've run the cord all the way down and around. So you have to wire it up into ECU, you can find the diagrams for it. I'll actually probably do a video on how exactly to wire it up, because it can be a bit complicated at times. I actually think there are a few more videos here on YouTube about how to do it. Um, so, we're just going to talk about my settings right now. First of all, you have to turn the key so that the... Unplug that. The fuel pump comes on. You'll see it starts doing its thing and beeping and all that. Sorry about the glare. Um, I can't really do anything about that. You can see my camera reflected in it. But, first thing you do is you'll go to the top menu. Go down to your settings. Uh, you've got high throttle, low throttle, uh, throttle point, any point, all this stuff. Um, I'm not going to worry with all that because I don't know it all. But you can go and see on my corrections here how for each RPMs I've got different settings on fuel and all that. And it goes all the way up to 7600 because that's where we set that and then you've got low throttle which is the same thing obviously I'm running the 259cc injectors so I'm not actually going to go through all the settings um, just because I don't really want to mess them up but that's what you have to deal with that's what you have to work with I'll turn the fuel pump off because that really gets annoying um, that's what you have to work with when you tune these sort of cars, is you have to go in, you have to take a wire band with a laptop and figure out where it's running rich or lean or wherever there, and then you just simply compensate for it. It can be an easy process, it can be a difficult process, it depends on how much you know about it. I don't know that much about tuning with the SDFC2. I have a friend who's done it quite frequently and he came and he helped me out mostly, so perhaps I can get him to do a spot on it. But otherwise, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm also going to do a video on how to wire up the muff sensor. And hold on, I'll, I'll go around and show you that here in just one moment. I know I was going to said I was going to do the muff sensor, but I really can't because I'm not even sure where everything goes at this point. Um, so I'm just going to shove it back down in there. I'll do the differences between a draw through and a blow through math sensor setup. This is a blow through. So it is post turbo. Goes around, goes up and goes under the throttle body. Draw through would be the math sensor would be about right here pre turbo. And I'll do a sort of a more personal note on that. Okay, so I'm back in my room because it's all outside and there's a lot of ambient noise. So I'm gonna explain the difference between a draw through turbo setup and a blow through turbo setup because there's currently a thread on Nissan forums right now that myself and several other Nissan forums users are in a conversation about which is better draw through or blow through. I've made a illustration here. This would be a draw through turbo setup. You've got your turbo and then you have your math sensor here with the filter, and it's quite crabby. So filter, your math sensor goes into the turbo and then up either to your intercooler or throttle body. That's a draw through turbo setup, which is usually most factory turbo setups. Your blow through turbo setup 
would be, this would just be a filter, there'd be no math sensor here. Go into the turbo, come out of the turbo, and then that would be where your math sensor is, right here. Um, which is most aftermarket turbo applications. And the reason, sorry, there's people outside, the reason that that is, is because factory turbo products, the ECU can compensate from the difference between positive 5 pounds and negative 5 pounds, aka okay, 5 pounds of boost and 5 pounds of vacuum. Say, for example, if you're under boost, you, you know, you're running the car hard and then you have to shift gears or you have to slow down suddenly, you have to stop suddenly. The ECU on a draw-through turbo setup compensates for that. It's designed to compensate for that. In a naturally aspirated car that's been turboed without an ECU modification, aka without a tuned ECU, your ECU can't compensate for that and you'll get run into problems where the car will not idle correctly, it will stall out on you, it will bog on you, and you get all this this trouble with it. So it's best just to run a blow-through turbo setup, setup for naturally aspirated cars that are just happen to be turbocharged. And that's pretty much it, so go for it. Cheers.